Hi, my name is Daniel Olson. Today on Empowered Nutrition, we're going to be talking about one of America's most easily recognized and yet underutilized culinary vegetables. In fact, this is one of my absolute favorites. So stick around, we'll be right back. I wait all year for this vegetable to come into season. In fact, I start looking for it around September, and usually I start seeing it at the end of September or beginning of October. Of course, what I'm talking about is pumpkins. These are one of my absolute favorites. I love these with just about everything. The pumpkin is about as American as it gets. Long before Linus waited up all night to meet the great pumpkin, in pre-Columbian times, Northeastern Native Americans, including my ancestors, the Iroquois, include pumpkins and other squash among the three sisters, which included corn, beans, and squash that made up most of their agriculture. Without pumpkins, it is very likely the pilgrims would not have survived their first winter. Pumpkins stored well for long periods of time, which provided access to vital nutrients during long winters. Pumpkins come in a wide variety of shapes, sizes, colors, and flavors. Pumpkin is considered a low-calorie, nutrient-dense food. It is incredibly rich in vital antioxidants and vitamins, including vitamin A and flavonoid polyphenolic antioxidants, such as lutein, xanthan, and carotenes in abundance. Pumpkin seeds are an excellent source of omega-3 fats, magnesium, zinc, and have a number of antioxidants that have been shown to support prostate health. With all of these amazing nutrients and health benefits, you would think that pumpkins would be more than a holiday decoration or flavoring for desserts and coffee. As a country, we seem to have forgotten what an incredibly versatile food pumpkins are. They go equally well in desserts, in savory dishes, or just on their own. Many people think they don't like pumpkins, but that's because they're eating the wrong kind. The big carving pumpkins take up all their energy and use it towards growing big. Smaller pie pumpkins use their energy to create nice sweet flavor. In fact, there it is. This is the pie pumpkin. Generally they come in a smaller size, they're a little bit less thick, and of course taste quite a bit sweeter. Pie pumpkins are quite a bit sweeter than the regular carving pumpkins, so most dessert recipes actually need less sugar if you use a pie pumpkin rather than the big carving pumpkins. Now these pie pumpkins can be found in most grocery stores usually from about late September till the end of January. If you go out and look for them you'll be able to find them. Of course there's plenty of other delicious uh, flavorful varieties but when it comes to cooking I go for the pie pumpkin. Most recipes require you to pre-cook your pie pumpkin. Although many of them tell you that you should cut your pie pumpkin in half, put it face down on a cookie sheet, and then cook it that way. Of course, cutting a pumpkin in half is a little bit complicated. Many of the tools that you would need look like something out of a horror movie. I think there's an easier way. I personally choose to be a little more efficient. Some people would call it lazy, but I find that I can get better results with less work. So, whether it's efficient or lazy, it's the way that I use for cooking my pumpkins. For this method, the only tool that you need is a knife with a one inch thick blade. For this method, firmly place the pumpkin on your cutting surface. Take the blade, point side in, and while making sure this hand is clearly out of the way of the direction of your cutting, push in until you feel the knife go all the way through. Then remove and repeat two more times, cutting in a triangular shape. You'll have another piece neatly come out what this does is it creates a vent hole. So when you cook your pumpkin in the oven, 
there's plenty of room for the steam to escape. This prevents a messy explosion and helps to get your pumpkin at exactly the right moisture content for most of the cooking that you're going to be doing. Now, all you have to do to cook your pumpkin is put it in a 400 degree oven. Allow the pumpkin to cook until it's done, roughly 90 minutes. You'll know when the pumpkin is done when you can stick a skewer easily through the pumpkin. Once your pumpkin is done, you can remove it from the oven and allow it to cool. When your pumpkin is cool, you can easily slice it in half, remove the seeds with a large spoon, save the seeds for later, and scoop the flesh of the pumpkin into a container to save it for later use or use it immediately in your recipe. If you do find that a recipe absolutely requires you to cut the pumpkin in half, grab your 10 inch chef knife, place the pumpkin on its side, hold it firmly against the cutting surface, make sure to keep that thumb out of the way, and then firmly slice and push down to remove the top of the pumpkin. Once you have removed the top of the pumpkin, turn the pumpkin perpendicular to your original cut and then repeat that same slicing motion keeping the hand clear again and there you have two neat halves of a pumpkin you can cook it like this or remove the seeds first and save them for later <laughs>